Hello. This video is about relative permeability and recovery. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show exemplar relative permeability saturation functions, as on the board, for a water wet rock, an oil wet rock, and a mixed wet rock. And I'm going to talk about the generic features of those functions. And then I'm going to show how we can use these functions to estimate roughly the likely water flood recovery. And we're going to relate that water flood recovery both to the relative permeabilities, but also more importantly, to the physics of the displacement. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to talk about a water wet rock. So we have here a, a function drawn on the board for a water wet system. Okay, so let's just go through the features of the uh, functions that we see here. So it's water wet. This is the relative permeability as a function of water saturation. This is the water relative permeability, and this is the oil relative permeability. We're looking at water flooding. So the initial conditions are where we have a low initial water saturation, which we assume is the conate water saturation, where the water is effectively immobile. So the water relative permeability is zero at this point. Because oil occupies most of the pore space, the initial oil relative permeability is very close to one. The oil is in most of the pore space, but more importantly, in most of the larger pores. OK, so the oil relative permeability starts out close to one. The water relative permeability is close, is zero. Now, as water flood proceeds in a water wet rock, it's a percolation type process where the water invades the narrowest throats and the smallest regions of the pore space by snap off. And then there's some cooperative pore filling. But the important thing is that the water remains in the smallest regions of the pore space, which means although the water saturation increases because conductance scales with radius to the power four, that means that even if, okay, you, you're filling a lot of pores and throats, there may be a significant volume. If they're the smaller ones, they have a low relative conductance. So the water relative permeability remains low. Okay? Obviously, it increases with saturation. The other feature we notice is that we never get to a saturation of one. Because of the snap-off process, there will be a tendency to strand, to trap the non-wetting phase, which we'll call oil in this case, the non-wetting phase in the larger pores. So we have a significant residual oil saturation. So what's here is the residual oil saturation. This is typically in the range of somewhere between 20 and 50 percent. Okay, so this is between about 0.2 and 0.5. The relative permeability of the water when the oil can no longer flow, so all the oil is trapped, remember the oil is trapped in the big pores, so it's blocking off the main channels for flow. So this maximum water relative permeability is typically quite low. So KRW max okay, is typically in the range of about as low as 5% to about 20%. Okay, so it's quite low. Now let's look at the oil relative permeability. The oil is remaining in the larger pore spaces. Okay, so the oil relative permeability, one might say, stays quite high. On the other hand, we do have a snap-off process, so we are disconnecting the oil in some of the larger pores. The net result is an oil relative permeability that does fall with saturation. Obviously, water's disconnecting the oil, displacing the oil from the pore space. Um, but it is, in fact, not going to decrease as sharply as we're going to see in the other cases. Okay. We see here, I mean, the way I've drawn it is I've drawn it as a straight line. It doesn't have to be a straight line. We can have some curvature. Sometimes you can see something looks like that. Sometimes you can see something looks like that. The key point, though, is near the end point, right, the oil relative permeability actually drops quite sharply. 
That's one characteristic of a water wet rock. And why is that? Well, the oil is in the big pores, okay? When it's connected in the big pores, it can flow relatively readily. So the relative permeability isn't that low. But then you have a critical snap-off event that blocks the flow of the oil in the larger pores and the relative permeability drops rapidly. So near the end point where the, all the oil is about to become trapped, the relative permeability falls relatively sharply. What we're not going to see, which we're going to see in the other cases, is a long region where the oil relative permeability is close to zero. That's not characteristic of a water wet rock. Okay, so these are really the features. An oil relative permeability that drops sort of like this. I mean, it's reasonably sharp, but not as sharp as we're going to see in the other cases. A water relative permeability that remains low. And these are the typical values of residual saturation and the endpoints. Now let's consider recovery. Now, if we want to quantify, say, oil recovery for a displacement with these relative permeabilities, what you should do rigorously is obviously solve the relevant conservation equations for flow. So there's nothing wrong with doing that. But sometimes it's just useful to have a quick, you know, snap assessment so that you can compare different relative permeabilities. OK, so the way in which you do this snap assessment is not in fact to get fixated on the residual saturation. So often people say, yeah, yeah, look at the residual saturation. The lower the residual, the better the recovery. What we're gonna show is that's really not the case for mixed wet and oil wet rocks, although in fact, it is fine for a water wet rock. What instead is a little bit more realistic way of looking at it is imagine that you're in an oil field and the average water saturation is here. Well, what you're going to find is oil is flowing much more readily than water. So if we're near a production well, for instance, and the saturation is in this range, we're producing virtually all oil and very little water. As you start injecting more and more water and the water saturation increases, imagine near a production well, so near where the, the oil's coming out, okay? As the saturation increases, you might say, well, um, you're going to get more uh, more water, but still, from this saturation range, you're still getting more oil than water being produced. Now, what happens in an oil reservoir is you, you begin by injecting water and you're producing oil, you're producing oil, you're producing oil. Then water breaks through, you start producing water, and there comes a point at which you're producing much more water than oil, and you sort of have to abandon the well. And of course, exactly what that ratio is depends on the economics and where you're producing and et cetera, et cetera. So again, don't get fixated. But an, an easy clue for the likely saturation range you're going to see in the field is between here and this point where the relative permeabilities cross. Because at this point, the relative permeabilities are the same. At higher saturation, you have a bit better flow of water than oil. Now you might say, yeah, but that depends on the economics and the details, and also it will depend on the viscosity. Let's see if I have a high, high viscosity water, say polymer, actually the flow will be lower because the, the flow is the relative permeability divided by viscosity. On the other hand, if it's a heavy oil, it will be the other way around, we'll have a higher water flow compared to oil. So again, there are details and you have to do the calculations properly, but as a, just a quick assessment, okay, as I said, it's a quick assessment. Doesn't mean if you do it more rigorously, you get a different result. It must be wrong, okay? As a quick assessment, generally speaking, a relative recovery is gonna be from where you started initially to around where the relative permeabilities cross. Now, in this case, actually, this is quite good for recovery. So water wet medium, media are considered good for recovery because in fact, that's quite a large range. You get almost close to the residual saturation before the water can flow more readily than the oil. And you often actually find when you do the analytic solution, in fact, the analytic solution is in fact, a water front moving through, just leaving behind the residual oil. And the reason is because when the oil can flow, it can flow readily, okay? Then the water basically just traps and you left behind in a water wet reservoir, essentially just the residual oil, okay? So you get down to the residual oil saturation. So that's, although the residual oil saturation could be quite large, okay, so it's not ideal, it's actually quite good. So water flooding will get you close, if not exactly, to the residual oil saturation in a water wet reservoir. 
However, the reality is uh, you don't have many water wet oil reservoirs. You do have obviously water wet gas reservoirs. So if we're looking at a, a water drive in a gas field, this is exactly what would happen and you get quite a lot of trapping. Um, if we're looking at CO2 storage and water is displacing CO2, this is what you're going to see. Okay, now let's look at the other extreme, okay, which is an oil wet rock and that's at the other side of the board. So we're going to have to move. So here is my oil wet case. Okay. So let's consider an oil wet rock. Okay. So in an oil wet rock, we have exactly the same plot here. We have the relative permeability as a function of water saturation. And here, this is the initial state. So one thing we're going to make clear is the initial condition is a low initial water saturation. The oil occupies most of the pore space. And so the initial oil relative permeability is close to one. And we're gonna see that in all cases. Now, I just want to say something here. Sometimes people say, no, no, no. An oil wet rock will typically have a lower initial water saturation than a water wet rock. And there's a reason for that. If I've squeezed the oil in at a high capillary pressure and the oil at high pressure is contacting virtually all of the solid surface, you tend to see a more oil wet rock than if the initial capillary pressure is low, you've got quite a lot of water initially present in the rock. That's true. But that's not really a characteristic, it's, it's to do with the wettability alteration. What we're talking about here is we're going to just for comparison have the same initial water saturation in every case and therefore the initial oil relative permeability will be the same, close to one. Okay, okay. now let's look at what happens in an oil wet rock. So in an oil wet rock, we assume that essentially the entire pore space becomes oil wet. So now water is the non-wetting phase and the displacement is no longer a percolation-like displacement, it's an invasion percolation process. So the water goes in from the inlet, it, it will fill the largest throat that it can connected to the inlet, it will then fill the pore and then it will fill the next largest throat and so on until it finds a connected path of wide throats and pores through the rock and then it will start filling more and more of the pore space squeezing the oil down. What's going to happen? Well, let's look again at the water relative permeability. As we've described in invasion percolation, in fact, only a very small, and in fact, for an infinite system, an infinitesimal increase in saturation is necessary to allow the non-wetting phase, in this case, water, to connect across the rock. And once it's connected across the rock, it's connected across the rock in the big pores. Okay, so it's going to dominate the flood. So the water relative permeability increases rapidly, right? It doesn't go along the zero axis like it was for the water wet rock. It increases rapidly. So we see a rapid increase here. Okay. Now let's look at the endpoint. SOR here, the residual oil saturation is actually very low. Okay, so SOR here is typically about 10% or lower. Why is that? Well, the reason why that is, it's oil wet. The oil clings to the surface of the rock. It's coating all the surfaces, all the corners, all the narrow regions of the pore space. But it's not really disconnected. This is the point. It's not disconnected because these these oil layers clinging to the surface, connected in lots of small pores, it can still flow and it can still flow down to a really very low saturation. So if I do an experiment and I have a piece of rock and I keep injecting water and I keep injecting water and I keep injecting water and I keep doing it, I will get down to residual saturations of around 10%, if not lower. However, this is where it's very misleading. I can do this in the lab because I can take my piece of rock and I can press the pump 
and I can be pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping, and I can inject hundreds of thousands of pore volumes. So in the pore space, water moves past and again and again and again, thousands and thousands and thousands of times. This never, never, never can happen in a reservoir because what it means is I've got a whole reservoir and I inject enough water to fill that reservoir once, twice, thrice, thousands of times. Economically, it makes no sense whatsoever. We would normally only inject around one pore volume of water. Okay, so this is one thing you've got to be really clear about. Just because an oil wet reservoir has a low residual saturation does not mean you get anywhere close to that when you inject water into a reservoir. Okay, you, you may near the injection well because lots of water gone through, but in the middle of the field, absolutely not. Okay, so the, let's go through this now. So reservoir is about 10, the maximum water relative permeability is high. Normally, it will be greater than 50%. Okay, that's a characteristic of an oil wet rock. The final water saturation is high. Now let's look at the oil relative permeability. Well, the oil relative permeability now should understand what's going on. The water preferentially fills the wider pore spaces. So the oil is now confined to the narrow pore spaces. So the oil relative permeability drops extremely sharply. Okay, so it drops like a stone, okay? Goes down sharply. But it isn't strictly zero until we get to here. So there's a long region here where the oil relative permeability is very close to zero, but not exactly zero. What's that? That's layer flow. That's where the water has gone in all the big pores. It's dominating the flow. The oil is confined to these layers and these layers stay connected. So they do allow the oil to flow, but really, really, really slowly. So a characteristic of an oil wet, or indeed a mixed wet rock we're going to get to, is a region here where the oil relative permeability is very close to zero. So on a linear axis, you know, it looks like it's almost zero. So here is what's called layer drainage. Okay. So the characteristics then are a water relative permeability that increases sharply, a maximum value greater than about 50%, an oil relative permeability that drops sharply with a region here around zero, and a residual oil saturation that's around 10% or less. Now let's think about what it means in terms of recovery. Using the quick snap assessment, okay, that we introduced a few minutes ago, you would expect a change in saturation from where you started to where the relative permeabilities cross. Oh, that's not very much at all, is it? And that's what happens. I inject water into an oil wet rock. It goes through the big pores. Once it's going through the big pores, it's flowing nicely. I inject, right, it's water, and I'm producing here. So injector producer, okay. I start injecting the water. It finds this pathway of big pores. It's, it's off. It flows all the way to the uh, production well, and I start producing lots of water. Now the oil is still connected, it can flow, but it's flowing slowly. And when I increase the saturation, it's flowing much more slowly than the water. So in most cases, in most cases, oil actually in the reservoir is, is typically in the range of about 10 times more viscous than the water. You, the, as soon as the water breaks through and then you're actually just producing and producing water. So you're cycling the water and it's no longer economic to keep producing. So a war oil wet reservoir is bad for water flooding in general, okay? And the only cases in which you can make it more favorable is in fact to make the water much more viscous to try and hold back the water by, for instance, polymer flooding. So this is well known. Characteristic of an oil wet reservoir will be relatively early breakthrough of water. The water can travel rapidly. And then you start producing a bit of water, but there's still a lot of oil retained in the reservoir. And as I keep injecting water, basically cycling it, sort of more and more oil is sort of dribbling out. But the overall recovery is going to be poor. So a water wet reservoir is actually good for recovery. An oil wet reservoir is bad for recovery. Okay, so water wet good, 
oil wet bed. That's relatively straightforward and well known. Now, let's take the case that's in between. A mixed rep reservoir. Okay. So here's my mixed wet case. We're showing the same plot as before. Okay. Here is the relative permeability. Here is the water saturation. We start again, as I said, just for comparison purposes. You're going to have the same initial water saturation, the same initial oil relative permeability as before. That's the initial condition. Okay. That's when the oil first goes into the rock, when actually it's a water wet rock, the oil is there. Then there's the wettability change to either of the three states we're talking about. Okay. So that's our mixed wet case. Now you might say, well, <laughs> um, water wet has these characteristics, oil wet has these characteristics, mixed wet is something in between, isn't it? So it will be in between in some sort of intermediate fashion and the recovery will be intermediate. Actually, no. So let's go through this and see where it is like that and where it isn't. So let's look at the oil relative permeability first, because that's actually the less controversial. The oil relative permeability, what's going to happen in a mixed wet rock is there's some water wet pores. So initially, actually, the water goes into the small water wet pores. So it's a bit like, right, it's a bit like the water wet case. Okay, so the oil relative permeability still drops. It's probably not going to drop quite as sharply as the oil wet case, but maybe a bit more sharply than the water wet case. So again, that, that is intermediate, isn't it? Then as the displacement proceeds, you begin to fill now the oil wet regions of the pore space and you do exactly what you see in an oil wet case, you start filling the larger oil wet pores preferentially. The oil is then confined to smaller regions of the pore space. When we get near the end of the displacement, we see here that there's a region where the oil relative permeability is again close to zero. What is that? It's now we're filling the oil wet regions of the rock trying to squeeze the water into the smaller pores, and of course they're oil layers, so, so that we again get an oil layer drainage regime, maybe over not quite a large saturation regime, and the residual oil saturation is low, but maybe not as low as we see in the oil wet case, because we, we can have some trapping in the water wet regions, it's not necessarily so strongly oil wet. We still see layer drainage, right, but maybe not so over such a, an extensive range of saturation. So we see this layer drainage here, and we have an SOR that's typically in the range of 0.1 to 0.2. The water relative permeability is endpoint. Okay, the residual saturation is a little bit larger. It's, it's in some of the smaller water wet regions and some of the larger oil wet regions, so it's sort of in between, isn't it? So your KRW max it's typically in the range, you know, it's intermediate, so it's in the range of 0.2 to 0.5. So in all of these cases, it is an intermediate case. You know, the oil well perm drops a bit more steeply than it does if it's water wet, a little less steeply than if it's oil wet, but residual oil saturation is sort of in between the water wet and the oil wet, wet extremes. The endpoint water relative permeability is, is between what it would be if it's water wet and oil wet. And, um, and yeah, you get a layer drainage regime, but it's not as big, you know, there's no layer drainage if it's water wet and you know, there's a lot of layer drainage if it's all wet. So that's definitely a sort of in-between behavior, which you sort of expect. The surprising at first sight result, however, and this is really controls recovery, so it's important, is what's happening here. Because you might think naively, yeah, it's mixed wet. So if it's mixed wet, you know, you feel some small pores and some bigger pores. So it's sort of in between. So the water relative permeability rises faster in the water wet case, but not as fast as the oil wet case. So it's something in between. No, absolutely not. And this is key. And this is what we've seen experimentally in our laboratories. We've actually imaged what the displacement process is. And what we find <coughs> is this is a percolation process. So to begin with, you fill the water, some of the water wet pores. Okay, so you're filling by snap off 
the water wet, throat, and then a pore, you know, around the rock. Okay, fine. But that water, in most mixed wet cases, it's not strongly water wet. Those pores and throats don't connect. Then what you start to do is you start to fill the oil wet regions and they're preferentially fill the large oil wet pores. And you do it by a piston like advance from a neighboring throat, which has been filled with water. And of course, because it's mixed wet, you've actually filled quite a lot of the pore space, you know, bits and pieces. You start filling these large oil wet pores. And again, that's percolation like you're basically doing it in order of size throughout the rock. But again, you're not connected. So you see a big change in saturation. And yes, you are filling big regions of the pore space, but they're not connected to each other. And this is where it's very different from the oil wet case. In the oil wet case, within invasion percolation, if I fill a wide throat and a wide pore, by construction, it has to be connected to the inlet. So you're filling the wide regions and they are connected. In the mixed wet case, when you start filling the oil wet regions of the pore space, you're filling the wide regions, but plop, 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 plop. The water is technically connected through layers and through you know, the regions it's already filled, but it's not connected through the wide regions. So the water relative permeability stays very low. It is lower than the water wet case. It is not intermediate or something in between, it's lower, okay, lower, right? And it's because of it being a percolation process where you fill wide pores, but they're not connected. Now you might say, but the water wet case is percolation as well. Yeah, it is percolation, but it's filling actually the narrow regions, the wetting layers can swell. There's actually, you get better connectivity for a given saturation. Here you can get a big change in saturation and there's no connectivity. The wetting layers are pinned, they're tiny little wetting layers. In the oil wet regions, they don't allow much flux. So the relative permeability is lower. So what does this mean in terms of recovery? So we see a low KRW over this region. Okay. What this means is when we're looking at recovery, okay, same idea, the water is actually held back in the pore space. You inject water, it's filling these big pores, but it's not really moving. The oil is escaping, even though the oil relative permeability is quite low, it's flowing better than the water. Okay, eventually, yes, you will fill enough of the rock, right? In percolation, you will, <coughs> you will get things connected eventually. You'll fill enough of the rock so that the water does get connected in some of the larger pores. And then, and then you see the water relative permeability increase. And often you can see an almost vertical increase. Something connects and something, shoo, it shoots up, okay? But the key thing is you get this long range here. So what that means in terms of recovery is I inject water. The water is actually held back in the pore space until you reach a high saturation around here. So in fact, the water advances at quite a high saturation. No, you don't get down to the residual because there's this layer drainage to actually get down to the true residual saturation will take, again, injecting thousands of pore volumes. You never get there, but you do get here. And this range of recovery, if we look at it, can be more favorable than the water wet case. It's always more favorable than oil wet. Oil wet is bad, end of discussion. Mixed wet behavior, okay, is certainly better than the oil wet case. And often, not in every case, and it also depends exactly on the wettability. You know, after all, if this does tend to be, you know, very few water wet pores and it's virtually all oil wet, it will morph towards this case. So, you know, it depends on the exact circumstances and the viscosity and everything. So again, don't, don't over categorize, okay? But it can give you better recovery. So we can have a situation where water wet is good, oil wet is bad, mix wet is better. So that's a brief introduction of the characteristics of relative permeabilities, their quick implication for macroscopic recovery and a physical explanation based on pore scale displacement of why that's the case. This is a useful exercise, but don't fall into one trap. Because flow in porous media, is a very complex subject. There is a tendency to want to over categorize. 
right? So <clears throat> someone says, the rock is mixed wet. You can say, oh, but I saw this video, good recovery. Well, it might be, certainly is for the cases I've shown here, but you have to take each case on its merits, okay? Don't, don't over put things into boxes and label the box. And this is a big mistake. I've seen this happen before with people labeling the wettability <coughs> and then coming up with a statement on recovery that isn't necessarily correct. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs>